Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Everything Medicare podcast. Happy Monday. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Today is Monday, the 8th of April. Where has the year gone? And if this is your first time tuning in, my name is Christian Brindle. And every single week, my me, my company and I bring you a podcast where we talk about your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age of retirement. And I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Um, today I want to talk about long-term care. And this is a topic that I see come up quite a bit. What I mean by long-term care, quite simply put, is when people need to go to an assisted living facility, or perhaps they need to go to um, a retirement home, and there's a lot of different types of long-term care facilities. Now, some are more um, independent for the residents than others, you know, some, some of them are more of a community, and there's just, there's, there's certain types of assistance, but not, um, as much as others. I'm going to share a little story with you. Before I got into working with my dad in the insurance industry, I used to work at an assisted living facility for multiple years where I I, I worked in a lot of different departments of this place. I mostly worked in the kitchen where I was a a server. Um, I washed dishes from time to time. I tried to I did a lot of different roles depending on what they needed of me. I worked the um, the concierge position for some time at the front desk on weekends, did night security a little bit. So I and I got really plugged into the community. And I was a teenager at this point. Um very very young, but I I I I I observed a great deal of the environment of a long-term care facility, or more specifically, an assisted living facility, and kind of how they operate, I'll t- I, I can mainly describe what this place looked like. Now, the reason why I knew about this place was my grandmother, on my mom's side, lived in this place for some time. Now, to give you the background on that, and I'll try to put it into a nutshell, my grandmother on my mom's side, was living in Hilton Head, South Carolina, which is almost on the other side of the country from where we are here in Utah. My grandmother's husband, so my grandfather, passed away a few years prior to that, but my grandmother still lived on her own for some time. Her her, her condition, as far as, you know, um, mentally, probably as well as physically, because she had some instances where she was falling, getting hurt, breaking bones, needed to participate in rehab facilities. And it came apparent to my family and I that we, well, my my parents at the time, my mom and my dad, that it probably wasn't the best thing for her to be living on her own and not to mention that, living so far away. Um, so we moved her out to Utah and we she went into this assisted living facility. And so this place in particular was very, very nice. Um, me working there, being being there every day for years of my life. And for by me being 12, 13 years old was when my grandmother moved in there. She lived there for probably five or six years before I started working there. Um, the point of this story is this. What I observed, and with these types of facilities, there's good ones and there's bad ones. Nobody wants to be in a facility. Very few people. I guess there are some that might want to be, um, depending on their circumstance, but very few people want to be in a facility. They really get a bad rap. There's good ones and bad ones. This one, I would say, was a relatively good one. Um, It was very independent. Most of the people living there were in fairly good mental health. Um, They had a portion of the facility that was for more, you know, high needs residents, but for the most part, it was more of a community. People were very independent. They'd come eat when they wanted to eat. They didn't have to worry about food. It was cooked for them. There was a full-on kitchen, hence me working in the kitchen, where they had a menu. They could order off the menu what they wanted, um, different meals every day, very commonly switched up. It was 
very high quality. Um, the the head chef in the kitchen at our particular place was the head chef at a, a local five star restaurant here in Utah that was one of the fanciest, most expensive restaurants in the state. Um, so it was very high quality. Now, depending on how much care someone needed at this place, the cost to be there was pretty outrageously expensive. You know, it was um, probably at least $5,000 a month. And if you were on the other side of the building where you needed more care, it was probably closer to seven or $8,000 a month. Now, that was years ago. Many, many years ago, chances are those prices have gone up. And different places have different types of costs and things along that nature. The point being this, there's two different types of scenarios where someone can afford that. Number one, they have insurance that pays for it for them. Number two, they're insanely wealthy or they have a nice bit of retirement saved up or or in the bank or whatever the case may be. Okay, so essentially, folks, now another thing about this facility that I worked at, there was a CNA staff that was there 24 hours a day. They took shifts. Um, There was always someone at the front desk that they could call. It was a very nice place. It was more like a a hotel more than anything else, a very nice hotel, and not so much a care facility. Now, there are plenty of care facilities out there, you know, like... Facilities such as Alzheimer's units, um, a lot of retirement homes where, you know, the people don't get the type of care that they need. There's good ones and bad ones. Nobody wants to go to one, but it's important to know how you're covered in one of these places. It's very, very important, in my opinion, to know how you're covered because the lot, I mean, The last thing that anybody wants is to be in a position in their life where they just can't live on their own and happens to a lot of people. Father time is undefeated. It will come to a point in my life, my my wife's life, my my new my unborn daughter's life who's on her way. Um it's 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 a mortality thing. It's very, very complicated and complex and nothing that anyone would want to think about but I wanted to put it into perspective this way to, to to get folks to understand that they need to understand how they're covered worst case scenario if they need to go to a place like this stay with me into segment two I'll talk about exactly how someone on Medicare is protected how it works what's included what's not included and we will talk about what covers the what. Stay with me. Stay tuned. I will be right back. Welcome back, folks, to segment two of the this Monday's edition of the Everything Medicare podcast. Thanks for sticking with us this far. Now let's talk about long-term care and how it's covered. That's what they refer to it as. Okay, so First things first, it's important to understand. Now, this could change. Now, as I'm giving you this information, this is current as of April 8th, 2019. There have been a lot of talks for this to change, and I'll come back to that in a second. But as of this very moment, Medicare provides very limited coverage in a long-term care facility, an assisted living facility. Medicare will cover, they would classify it as what's known as a a skilled nursing facility um, visit to where someone has 100 days of coverage, 20 days where they don't pay anything out of pocket, day 21 through 100, there's a copay per day, but no one goes into an assisted living facility for 100 days. You don't get a tremendous amount of coverage. It's a huge gaping hole that Medicare leaves behind and Medicare plans leave behind. Now, there's been whispers and talk that certain types of Medicare Advantage plans may be adding the, um, more coverage for long-term care in the future. We don't know. That's just speculation. Um, 
I will bring you that information as it becomes available. But as of right now, it th- there's there's limits to it. Um, and that's kind of what the coverage looks like for a Medicare and a Medicare plan. So what options do you have? Well, the first option is, and this is something that's, you know, is old as Medicare itself, there's pro there's in, there's policies known as long-term care plans. Now, how do long-term care plans work? Well, they're they're very similar to life insurance policies in how they're priced and underwritten, but I'll kind of give you an idea. Long-term care plans, and there's a lot of different types of long-term care plans, so I'm not speaking in um, absolutes with this, but most of the time, long-term care plans work something like this. You end up paying, now if you pick it, it's like life insurance in the sense where the younger you get it, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, It's based off of your age. Okay. Now, long-term care plans reserve the right to raise your premium, unlike a lot of different types of life insurance. A lot of life insurance policies, the premium is going to be fixed for as long as you have it. (laughs) Bless me. Um, But except for, you know, if you have a term policy and the term expires, I'm not going to get into that with life insurance. Long-term care policies are going to be more expensive the older you get it. So, If I was looking at a long-term care policy, let's say, and I'll use my state of Utah for an example. Let's say I I quoted one for someone who's age 65, okay, so they just got onto Medicare. Long-term care policy, depending on what they wanted it to look like, the benefits can vary, but it's probably going to cost a person anywhere between 200 bucks a month and it could go as high as 500 bucks a month if they're including their spouse in the coverage. Um, what does that get somebody? Because they're not cheap. Um, they get somebody usually, now like I said, this is not absolutes, okay? So do not hold me to this, but this is a common thing that this would look like. But you're usually probably getting about five years of coverage probably roughly about $100,000 a year of payout. And the way it would work is it would pay for the facility. And it's going to have its limitations. There's going to be things it doesn't pay for. Like it won't pay, well, most of them anyway, aren't going to pay for someone to help you go up and down the stairs and that kind of stuff, you know, someone to come in out of facility. Um, What they'll do is they'll pay for the facility that you're in, period, most of the time. There's riders and things you can add on and things along that nature. I could talk about this all day. Um, But that's a long-term care facility. Now, if you're in the past five years or whatever the term is, you typically don't have any coverage or very limited coverage or however the program works. They're all going to work a little bit differently. Now, that's a really high price. A lot of people have a hard time with that. There's other options such as, you know, short-term care policies. They're a nice option because they give you some kind of protection, but it's a lot limited. So long-term care is probably going to be around five years, roughly, give or take. Short-term care, on the other hand, excuse me, I have hay fever. The spring time hits me hard, folks. Um, Short-term care is going to be a year or less of coverage. But, But someone age 65 could get one for probably significantly less than $100 a month, and it's going to be, it's going to vary, okay, on your state, your area, insurance company, whatever, but long-term care, short-term care, you know, short-term care policies advertise themselves by saying that, you know, 70% of stays when people go into a care facility are less than a year, I don't necessarily think there's a lot of truth to that, I mean, I have a hard time believing that, me working at the place that I did, I'd say the average stay for someone was more than five years. There were some people that stayed less than a year, but a lot of people were there for many, many years. Some of them 10, 15, some of them even 20 years, you know. And um, So who's to say? My, my opinion on it all is I don't necessarily think it's a terrible idea 
to get protection, but has to make sense for you. I'm not going to say that it's something that you should do or shouldn't do. What I think it's important is for you to know your options and to know how you're protected, and then you make the decision. And like I said, things could change. They could increase these benefits with Medicare programs as time goes by. We don't really know yet. This is the way it stands right now. And I thought it was a good, interesting topic to talk about because it's a question I get all the time from a lot of people, how they're protected in that type of situation. Stay with me into segment three and we'll wrap this puppy up. Welcome back, folks, to our third and final segment of today's episode of the Everything Medicare podcast. In closing, a couple things I wanted to touch on about this. Folks, there is such a thing as putting yourself in in a situation where you're insurance poor. What I mean by that is you have a significant amount of income coming in, whether it be retirement, whether you're still working, um, whether... You know, you, your social security benefits, whatever the case is, maybe you have a lot of savings, great retirement. Um, there's such a thing as making yourself insurance poor. You know, to, insurance is to, the, the purpose of it is to eliminate risk. That's the definition, to eliminate or reduce risk, um, to transfer the risk over to another party. A risk would be, you know, me getting hit by a car or me catching a disease or something like that, you know. Um, I lay out in the sun and I get something happening to my skin because of sunburns, you know, and I develop skin cancer or something like that. Those things are risks that, you know, and um, things that happen throughout life. There are people out there that get themselves insurance poor because they pick up every type of insurance you can, you know, earthquake insurance, flood insurance, pet insurance, uh, long-term care insurance, You need to make sure that something makes sense for you. I by no means am advertising you to go pick up a long-term care policy and spending, you know, thousands of dollars a year in premium for it. If, however, I'm for some people that makes sense. You know, for some people it does. For some people it definitely does not. You know, so it's it's a very tricky, slippery slope. I am of the opinion that there are no absolutes in, in, in insurance or people's situation. There's no absolutes, meaning that there's no one particular situation or one particular way of thinking or going about things that's going to work for everybody. And you know why? It's very, very simple. All of us are very individual. We're unique snowflakes breezing through the wind, we all have a different design to us, like a snowflake would. That's what I mean by that, you know. Um, We're all unique creatures, unique creations of God, if you believe in that kind of thing. And, And if you do or you don't, or if you don't, I'm not trying to push it on you. I'm just saying we're all very unique creatures. And we all have our own sets of needs, preferences. We all have you know, our own ways of liking to do things. And what you should do is um, play to that preference and play to those needs that you have. So for some of you listening to this, going the way of having some type of protection in the situation is what you need to do. For others of you, that's not the case. My job isn't to answer that question for you. My job is to take a look at your situation, give my opinion, but to present the facts for to you so you can be better equipped to make the right decision. That's always been my job in my career. And that is all that I believe my job is. My job is to show you the options you have available for you in different situations and you make a decision. I never want someone to be what's known as insurance poor. What I mean by that, and I've said it a couple times now, is you pay out so much premium every month for various different types of insurance that you're broke. 
<laughs> you you go get bro- go broke from paying all the premiums, you know, and that's that's a real thing, and not all insurance is necessary for everybody. Okay, so keep that in mind as you hear my words, as as you hear my message today. Very very important. Folks, I really, really appreciate you listening today. Um, we, we can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for supporting what we're doing here. Um, I really think what we're doing is a good thing for people. We're providing information to where, you know, nowadays the only information you can really get it is, you know, from a broker. It's not easy to find this information online unbiased. There are some places, but not that many. And so we want to change that. We want to change this industry and make it more transparent to where things aren't so secretive. I don't believe they should be. Thank you so much for listening, folks. As always, if you have a request of a topic you'd like me to touch on, on our next upcoming podcast, please send me an email at Christian, B-C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, B as in boy, Christian, B at xmission.com x the letter x is an x-ray mission like a mission m-i-s-s-i-o-n.com christian b at xmission.com and i will answer your question if i think that it's relevant on our next podcast thank you for listening folks you're amazing you're incredible and i will talk with you again on saturday have a fantastic week and happy monday